the Laps Factor Podcast. Important midfield groups in 2020. And as always, I'm a homer, and this team just happens to have one of the best midfield groups in the country, Syracuse. Um, they return my three of my favorite midfielders right now in lacrosse. They're, none of them are, are, are Docs Aitken or uh, Costabile caliber midfielders, but all of them are right below that. Uh, very good pieces, very good complementary players. All of them are complete players in the sense that they are they're great in transition they're great in six on six sets they can dodge they can shoot they can do everything all right so Syracuse these midfielders are the the old geezer of the bunch here is uh Jamie Trimpoli he is going to be a senior here in 2020 he was 24 and 9 33 points 24 and 9 his line mate last year Brennan Curry uh, so he'll be a junior, and uh, so Trimboli will be a senior. Uh, Curry will be a junior. Curry goes nineteen and fourteen, so he's a little bit more fifty-fifty. But Trimboli, he Trimboli's just got a, I think maybe just a little bit better eye for off-ball play. At least uh, he ends up on that side, that you know that that offside wing, whereas an attackman's coming up the right side when they're reversing things. Trimboli often is just camping in that spot there. He loves that shot from about ten to twelve yards off that wing. So Trimboli and Curry both play really well together. They complement each other well, and they make it very tough for opposing defenses because who do you pull out of those two guys? And oftentimes we would end up seeing maybe both of them get pulled uh, as they put a shorty on on Syracuse's off ball attackman. But now, with the addition of our our boy here, uh, Tucker Dordovic, coming back, that's especially in the fall already. It I don't know what defenders are going to do if if that line holds up and that's the line they put on the field, and you have those three midfielders on the field along with Scanlon and and Rafis, who are both very capable attackmen. Cook getting ready to prove himself, but those midfielders are they're going to make it really tough because I don't think you can afford to. Uh, short stick any of the three Syracuse attackmen anymore. I think that these three Syracuse attackmen will all demand a pole. And I think as a result of that, only one of the poles is going, and who knows, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, you know, maybe one of these, maybe they end up the, the crazy thing. And I talked to, um, uh, uh, Kark about this P Kark in my interview with him was the crazy thing is that it, it, there is a world in which an all American midfielder that is now playing attack in Chase Scanlon could get the short stick because he it's poten he's potentially the least capable Dodger out uh, at least one Dodger out of all of the five other guys that Syracuse is going to put on offense in that first team. Certainly all three of those midfielders, I think overall are, are better Dodgers probably um, than Scanlon. And, and more specifically, they're probably going to be slightly better Dodgers than Syracuse's um, offensive set. Now Syracuse with a new offensive coordinator, that may change that dynamic a little bit. Syracuse's offense in the past in, in, it, they they did a lot of dodging into traffic. I don't know if that was part of the the scheme or if that's just how it panned out. But over the last handful of years, Syracuse has done a lot of dodging into traffic, trying to draw adjacents and and odd slides, and and then hitting adjacent guys or hitting guys in the backside for goals. So I feel like those. It's just crazy that that midfield unit. They are tough. It is going to be tough to decide who gets the pole. Are they going to end up giving it to one of the attackmen or the short? Who, are they going to end up giving a short to one of those attackmen and, and throwing another pole up there? But you put you put Dordovic, you put Trimboli, and you put Curry on a line together. It's going to be deadly. And then that's not – I mean, you go deeper than that. They've got Quinn, Kim. Uh, you got Mangan. Uh, those are guys that will probably see a little bit of time on the second line. More importantly, though, second line, legit, Libka and Buttermore. So you have your top three, but then behind them, you've got Lipka and Buttermore. And then whoever ends up getting that, that third slot on that line, it's going to end up being, be, you know, between guys like Mang and Quinn, uh, Kim, whoever. I, I forget who, who did it. I talked about it in the, um, uh, the podcast that we did about the Denver scrimmage, the, the, who, who was, ended up being on that second line because they had some guys injured. But you figure Lipka, 24 points, and Buttermore, 23 points. Buttermore being the goal scorer, 20 and 3, and Lipka being the more 50-50 guy at 14 and 10. Lipka is a very good midfielder. So all in all, you, you, you put these guys, these five midfielders, uh, as long as they all stay healthy and they're all good to go, that's one of the most formidable midfield groups in the country. And I'll rip off just their point totals from uh, last season. Trimboli, 33. Curry, 33. Libka, 24. Buttermore, 23. And, I, and Griffin Cook, he got some midfield time. He ended up with eight points, but he will be playing attack, it looks like now. So brutal. 
Like te- it, teams are going to have a last year. The the midfield was the strength of that Syracuse team. Rafis was a little bit hobbled early on, so the middies ended up having to do a little bit more of that work, and they did it. They did a great job. So I think that all of those guys coming back, and now you've got Dordovic thrown into the mix. I think Dordovic ended up putting up somewhere in the area of twenty five points. I could actually tell you, Dordovic in twenty eighteen, his freshman year, he put up. 19, he went 19 and 5, 24 points for Dordovic his uh, freshman year of 2018. He sat out all of last year injured. So, Syracuse, their midfield, I think they're one of my favorite midfields in the country. Honestly, I haven't looked deep enough into any other midfields so far. And most of the other top teams that I've talked about so far have all lost a lot of midfield pieces. So, I, I, I'm fairly sure by the end of it, it's partly because I'm a homer, but partly because I think it's going to be true. I I, I feel kind of comfortable saying that that may be the best group of five midfielders in the country. It's just really hard to say that until we see what goes down. Because, you know, you, for instance, you got Docs Aitken coming back at Virginia, and they've got a bunch of guys below him. So anyway, uh, and, and then the other top teams I've talked about, Yale, they lost a lot at the midfield. Virginia lost a lot at the midfield. Just losing Ryan Conrad alone is, is brutal. So the fact that Syracuse lost nobody, they bring back everybody and gain Dordovic, that's going to be big for them. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you are notified when we put out more videos. If you want to support us beyond that, you can go to laxfactor.com and uh, get yourself swag, T-shirts, coffee cups, shorts all that good crap, but more importantly, just share the video and all that good stuff. And as always, thank you for watching. Yeah.